Hey guys, so uh, just wanted to take a break from some stuff, kind of get my mind off some things, um, but I'm trying to stay productive at the same time, so just wanted to make a video real quick, um, thought it would be kind of fun to go into, so I just wanted to ask, what do all of these IEMs have in common? Um, what's would you say that they all have in common other than being earphones <laughs> and uh, and uh, all being different prices um, so the thing that they all have in common is they all contain speakers little itty bitty teeny tiny speakers Beautiful, glorious, wonderful, itty bitty, teeny tiny speakers. Um, so, a little bit about my history. I, what was it, back it's about 2020, uh, I want to say it was maybe January, fe probably February of 2020. My first pair of IEMs was uh, the CCA C12, and what attracted me to it was the fact that there were uh, six speakers in each earphone, and I was like, "What? Si what? Six six speakers in each earphone? I'm like, what is this magic? Like, what is this nonsense?" This is crazy. And um, I went on uh, Zpolt, Z-P-O-L-T, on his YouTube channel. And it was actually his video that led me to purchase the C12. Because I was looking for something around a, a certain price. I didn't want to pay more than like $30, $40. Just because they were my first earphones. Um, my first in-ears. Uh, and I thought they looked pretty cool. So, anyway, um, so, you know, I, I watched his video describing the sound and whatnot. And I, um, I was like, man, like six speakers, that's nuts. And I kept hearing him say, yeah, it's got 1DD, 6BA. It's got, you know, or, uh, sorry, 1DD, 5BA. I'm like, what are these BA? What's a BA? I've never heard of a BA. I've been a nerd all my life. I mean, you take one look around my room, and I got electronics. I got crap everywhere. Um, I'm up to my ears in nerdum. Um, so I was like, okay, well, what is this stuff? Like this BA. So I like looked it up. You know, here. Oh, balanced armature. Oh, a balanced armature. What is it? But they're made out of metal. What? What? Why are they made out of metal? The rec rectangles. Why? Why are they rectangle? What? Like what? What? What is this? Like I don't get this. This is crazy. Like how do they make sound? What? Where does the sound come from? What? Well, da, 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 you know this and that. And so this started me down this whole rabbit hole. You know. So I bought the I am. I listened to it. I'm like, wow. Like these sound really good. Um. Like, they sound way better than I was expecting them to sound. Like, this is awesome. And uh, so, like, I do some research online. And I see, oh, okay, so this is this is how the balanced armature makes sound. This is what they are. And I was just so intrigued by, by them. And I love the look of, like, looking inside the drivers and see, or inside the shells and seeing all the drivers. And, um... I don't know what it was, man, but, like, I was hooked from the moment I saw them. And that was around the time that the, um, the blonde BLO3 was really big. And, uh, everybody was like, yeah, BL BLO3 is freaking awesome. And it's got the best tuning. And, and it's, like, it's the earphone to beat, you know, in the price range. And da-da-da-da-da. So I bought them. And I hated them. <laughs> I absolutely hated them. Um, the sound was good, but the fit, oh my god, the fit, and the nasty, stupid cable, and the, um, the ear tips, and it's just, 
I was like, this is awful. This is garbage. Like, and that's like stopped me dead in my tracks. I was like, nope, I'm not trying these. Da 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 da. I'm done. And then the uh, BLO one came out, and people were like, oh yeah, BLO one. Like, it's 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 good. It's it's not as good as the BLO three, but the fits a lot better. And da da da. And I was like, man, I really wanted to like those BLO three. But I just, I couldn't stand the fit and the cable and all this stuff. So I'm like, alright, well, I'll give the BLO one a shot. So I bought it. And the fit was still trash, but it was a lot better. Uh, much easier to wear than the BLO three. Oh my god. Like, not even close. And so I'm like, alright, so I can wear these. And I love the sound. So I was like, alright, sweet, it's a keeper. And it just rabbit holed. And so I was like, alright, well, I have a $40 IEM and I have a $25 IEM. Let's go up to a 60 or $70 IEM. And I'm not sure what I bought after that. I mean, I've owned so many. I've owned at least 50, 60, 70, 80 IEMs. I have no idea. Almost 100, um, including all the, all the ones that I built myself. It's got to be uh over 100 um so anyway <clears throat> so i remember the one big step up was the uh the audio legacy 3 and uh they were 130 dollars and i was like oh man throwing down 130 dollars for a pair of earphones i'm like this is getting pricey but i was like i need to know what they sound like like i need to know and i loved the the design of the shells they were so beautiful with the I, I had the one with the um the gears on it on the face plate and so i bought them and i got the package and i still have the box i have i keep all my boxes i've never thrown away any of my boxes and um so anyway so actually i might have thrown away a couple of them like really cheap ones but Anyway, so I, I open them up, and the unboxing experience is just beautiful. The cable's beautiful. The earphones are beautiful. I freaking loved them. Um, the sound was good. Like, super happy with them. So anyway, so what do all these have in common? Well, they all have the little speakers. Um, I have a couple that have a single DD in them. Uh, these are the new um, Q, uh, Queen of Audio um, Gimlet, G-I-M-L-E-T. Uh, I worked on these with um, QOA, uh, Queen of Audio. So I worked with them on their tuning, just helping them out a little bit. I, I didn't do any of the, the heavy like leg work, but I did help them out with the tuning just a little bit. And gave them some feedback and whatnot kind of went back and forth with their um with their engineers um i've been talking to them for a while so anyway so these have a single dd um and then i obviously have my anol vx which i absolutely love the only thing i wish is that these um i wish they had uh better venting they don't vent very well uh so pressure kind of stays inside and um, the sound could be a little bit better with venting. The the venting just kind of kind of closes things in a little bit. And it's I've circ I've gone through a bunch of ear tips trying to find a good ear tip. I've kind of settled on these for now. I'm not sold on them, but I've tried many many different ear tips um, just to find a good seal. But anyway, so these are for example an all BA set. And then we have the likes of like the uh, HM20, which is a new hybrid. And then we have the um, Truthier Hexa. And uh, of course, these are hybrid. And we have the CXS, which is uh, DD. So, anyway, so all these earphones, what they all have in common are drivers. And now that we have that out of the way, I thought it would be fun to go over with you guys and take apart. Uh, let me 
and get them all in frame here. Some of them are going to want to stick together. So anyway, I thought it would be fun to take apart some drivers. This is gonna this is gonna be really fun. Um, so anyway, uh, won't you join me on this little journey, and we will go over some driver technology, and we will take apart some earphone drivers. Um, what got me started on this video was uh, a while back people were asking about the difference between uh, electrostatic drivers and magnetostatic drivers and I was trying to explain the difference to them and I an old picture popped up in my Facebook feed so I wanted to share it with them but the pictures aren't very good uh, the quality is not very good so it's kind of hard to show them um, but yeah so I was like well I want to take apart the two drivers and show people. And that kind of evolved into, well, let's take apart some balanced armatures and let's show people what they what they look like inside. And let's take apart some uh, earphone speakers and see what they look like inside. And then I also have, so I was like, well, what else can I take apart and kind of show people? So I also have these. Um, these are both... KZ drivers. Uh, now, for for anyone who doesn't know, uh, they're not made by KZ. These, I believe, are actually made by E Audio, but they are made for KZ. Um, and there are two different versions. So here we have a two two nine five five base driver, and then we have KZ's upgraded. Uh, 22955 base driver because I want wanted to go into the difference between their their new drivers and their old ones because if you if you look you'll notice that the finish is different these new upgraded drivers have like a coating on them um, the metal feels different it's, it seems like a, like a higher quality metal higher quality finish so anyway, they're supposed to sound different too. They're supposed to be different. So I figured what better way to find out than to take them apart and see what's inside. And then I also have um, a Knowles driver here. This is a uh, 31985. I can't do anything with it. It doesn't have a spout and I don't want to print a housing for it. And it's the only one I have because I took the rest apart. So I figured we'd take that apart, and then I also have a couple dynamic drivers. So these are either not working or they're just out of tolerance. Um, so I have a, uh, what do you call it, a biofiber DD that I figured we would take apart. I have a titanium, and then I have a composite uh, driver that we will take apart. These are actually really good for the money. They're awesome. Uh, but these are out of, out of tolerance, so figured we would take them apart. And then I also have a couple other BAs. I have like a, a mid-range BA. I have some treble BAs. And then a single treble BA by itself. Uh, all of these don't have a nozzle on them, so that was another one of the reasons why I figured I'd take them apart. Um, I have many, many more BA, like many, that I could take apart, um, but they have nozzles on them, and eventually I would like to repurpose them to use in something else. So instead of taking them apart, I figured I would save them for now, and I will take apart the ones that I definitely cannot use. So without further ado, um, this is KZ's Magnetostat driver. Let me see if I can move the camera back a little bit because I'm blowing out the image. Alright, so that's KZ's magnetostat driver, and this is Sonian's uh, electrostatic driver. And let me grab some tools real quick, and I will be right back. 
Okay, so here are my tools of destruction. I have a couple uh, razor knives, I have a pair of tweezers, I got a pair of shears, and a pair of clippers. So, without further ado, let's take these apart and see what's inside. Um, I'm not going to be very gentle with these, and I do apologize if the camera goes out of focus. Uh, because it will from time to time. So let's start with the KZ Magnetostat driver. Um, this has two terminals on the back, a little PCB, and then the uh, port for the speaker itself. And what we'll do is we will start... The, there we go. We will start by cutting into them. Kind of pry up the metal here. There we go. be able to work with this. Sorry about my nail. My nail's flaking. So anyway, I hope you guys are I hope you guys are having a good week. Um, I've been extremely busy in the last few days and uh, I feel kind of bad because I haven't been responding to people's messages and whatnot, but I just have too much shit going on every time I stop to answer a message it's just it's just too much so oh, let's see let's focus in there alright so this is the KZ magnetostat driver let me get a putting device so there are two permanent magnets okay they are sandwiched together Okay, so you have permanent magnet on this side, permanent magnet on that side, and then you have your diaphragm uh, material in the middle. It's like some sort of piece of ferrous material, so it's steel. And then like I said, you got the PCB on the back. Uh, your wires wrap around on both sides, and they lead to these um, electromagnets. So you see you get a couple uh, wires there. And it's the electromagnets that drive the... Uh, piece. So you have your, uh, or I'm sorry, it's the electromagnets that drive the diaphragm. So you have your two pole pieces. They call these pole pieces. So you got a magnet on this side, a magnet on that side. I'm not sure what they're for. Uh, I assume they are used in conjunction with the electromagnet to drive the piece of metal inside, the piece of foil. I think they just help boost the magnetic flux generated by the electromagnets. I could be wrong though. Um, they could be used to keep the piece of metal centered and to keep the outside from moving but allow the um, electromagnets to push and pull the inside of the diaphragm, so the middle of it. Uh, so that is basically how the magnetostat works and it is uh, a low voltage um, electrostat technology. It's not actually electrostatic. <clears throat> it's uh, magnetic in its uh, operation. Unlike the uh, Sonian driver, which actually is electrostatic, um, and we will get into that shortly. So you have two terminals, um, one on either side, and then the terminal in the center is used to join the two halves together. So the way these work, uh, they are actually two different speakers, okay? And the way I think they're set up is I think each speaker is tuned slightly different from each other. So you have a diaphragm on this side inside this little square cavity and then you have a diaphragm that sits on this side in this little square cavity. And I believe 
the casing itself is held at um, is held at ground, and then the uh, positive terminal is used with this PCB here because that's why you see only one wire going across but there's still two different terminals so I believe that this casing is shared um, as like ground or held at ground potential and then the positive terminal is bridged across using this little wire here and is used to drive both sides and then uh, and then obviously you have the mouth here and that's where the sound emanates from now this is a working driver and I hate to take it apart but I don't care because I already have more of these and they're really expensive but I figure what the hell you guys are worth it I'm gonna take apart for you so let's break some wires and take some drivers apart Now these are um, tack welded together, so it's going to be kind of hard to take it apart. There we go. All right. I'm glad the macro on my phone is really good. So anyway, so here's the lid. Okay. There's the lid, and then you can't see it just yet, but there is. A gold piece of foil in there. Um, and let's take this off. So, so there's the inside of the lid. You have the PCB there, and you can kind of see. There you go. Yeah, you can see. See how it bridges from one side to the center. So your power comes in on one terminal here and then your ground is the other terminal and you can see the power goes from the outer terminal to the center and then the center bridges across to the other side so and then we'll take a look back inside here okay so there's our magnetostat driver there's our electrostatic driver you have a little hole right there that's one of the uh, parts of the driver and then, come on, there we go, all right, so here's the other side, let's take it apart, oh my god, so for anybody that doesn't know, these are a hundred dollars for a pair, so I said they are not cheap at all, all right, so there we go, and you see this little piece of foil here this is the membrane this is what generates the sound okay and you can see it's like tacked into place somehow all right so yeah there it is it's like a little basket that goes around and then I'm not sure what these if that's like adhered those four points you see those I'm not sure if that's adhered to the foil but anyway uh, it's some sort of like mylar film and it, it is maybe impregnated or um, a VPD vapor deposited like vapor dep deposition um, like gold I believe it's gold um, so so anyway, that's what the transformer's for. Um, I actually have a transformer here. Where did he go? Here it is. So, so that's the transformer. And basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I know so far, is that the voltage comes in. Um, it's boosted by the transformer here. Okay, so you have two terminals in, two terminals out. Um, you have, I believe, two coils within the transformer. Okay, and it boosts the voltage to the driver. And you have uh, one side. Oops. I'm not sure how they make contact exactly. I don't know if it's, if these just happen to make contact to the, um, 
these little PCBs somehow. Like if if these are the negative pieces and they're held at um, a certain voltage, and that's why that's why they're coated. Oh yeah, that's gotta be it. Okay, so yeah, you see how they're like gold colored? So they're coated on that side. But then, oh shit. But on this side, you see there's a section that is not coated. All right. So you have this like gold coating. It's like an enamel coating. And then on the other side, you don't. So I'm wondering if, huh. I'm wondering if these are what are actually driving the electrostatic speakers and then like I said maybe the the center cavity here is held at like ground potential somehow I'm not sure how the power is communicated maybe it's one side is positive and the other side is negative and the static travels through the driver like through this little pinpoint hole now I, I know there is this little oh goodness let me see if I can show you guys there we go so there is this little bump right here and I don't know if that is a terminal I believe that is some sort of terminal or if that's like what a static charge is built on but um anyway yeah so that is one half of the electrostatic driver and that's why these are so expensive is because they're really hard to manufacture um, they're super super delicate all right there you go and you'll notice see see it's sealed so the chamber is completely sealed but then you have the spout right there okay so there's a spout on that side and then there's a spout on the other side and they both combine so that it's almost as if they're tuned differently it's like two speakers in one and I don't know if they're using that to kind of fill in the coverage but um, yeah let's get this little foil out of here uh, actually let me do it this way Sorry guys, I know I should be editing these videos, but I am entirely way too lazy and at the same time way too busy to be filming a bunch of different angles and editing and all that. So this is kind of the best that you'll get. Just chewing that up. Damn it. Oh well. You see, I'm just kind of destroying it. But here we go. Alright, so there's that little little metal piece inside. tedious there we go and that my friends is the diaphragm and that is the reason why they are so expensive okay because that is like a nano coating of gold some sort of metal that's deposited onto that film and that film has to be perfectly loaded and I believe bonded somehow to this piece okay all within 
Oh, come on. All within this little, within this little cavity here. And I know those transformers can't be easy to wire either. Um, with machines, I'm sure it's not too too difficult. But still, those little teeny wires and the fact that they have to solder and bond all that, that's, that, I'm pretty positive that's all automated. So shout out to Sonian for, for designing these and for making them. I mean, there's a reason why Sonian makes them and nobody else has really cloned them yet. So, so there we go. Yep, so I was right. So it's almost like this one's attenuated because the foil is on the opposite side. And this little hole right here, you see there's a little wire there, so a little conductor. Uh, there we go. Let me see if I can get a really good zoom in on this. There we go. All right. So you guys see that? So that, I'm pretty positive, is gold plating. All right. So that's the other side. And the sound travels through that little hole there. Which is pretty crazy to think about. But yeah, so that one is gold. And then again, you have another layer of foil. But this one is, whoops, shoot. Where did that go? No! Where did you go? You bastard! There you are. So... So this piece of foil is a different size to the other one. Oh well, I'm totally destroying that foil. But anyway, you can see, and then there's like another gold piece inside. But as far as the mouth of the driver goes, it is, there we go, it's right there. See? So that's the mouth of the driver. You can see it's the chamber is completely sealed so it's totally different from the other one but yeah so that is the Sonian electrostatic driver so again you have see if I can kinda separate these out a little bit I'll zoom in too this will be easier alright so you got one silver one that's gold unit and then the other unit you have the nozzle okay you have a piece of gold foil then you have the one lid and you have the other lid and this these things can't be no more than what a couple probably about two and a half millimeters squared I mean they're that's that's tiny man that is ridiculously tiny so that is everything that goes into an, a true um, Sonian electrostatic driver so you have these two sheets of incredibly thin foil and then you have the uh, case covers or the part of the housing with the PCBs these come off by the way too like these little PCBs they're not attached they're just like glued on there see just a little little teeny tiny PCB with the tiniest little solder pads you've ever seen in your life and yes I have had to solder these before but you see 
There's a little teeny PCB. There's the lid, and it's got these little little hinges or whatever to kind of hold the PCB in place. And the, the little red stuff around it, that's all glue. So that's all glue. But yeah, you have a speaker there, speaker there. I'm not sure what these are for. I guess maybe positive and negative, or anode and cathode. And then your uh, foil, which is part of the driver and all that goodness so yeah so that's the electrostatic driver and let's zoom out real quick and I'm sorry guys I know all my videos are so long I try not to make everything too long maybe if I edit them it wouldn't be so bad but like I said I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon alright so let's look at the KZ magnetostat driver and you can see why these are so different so when you see earphones that say electrostatic and uh, it's got these, like, you can see why I'm like, no, it's not electrostatic, like, it's totally different. The technology, everything about it is totally different. Okay, so that's the KZ one. And then we'll, I'll just drag these back in real quick, just, just for reference, so you can see the complexity compared to the other driver. Okay. So you have all these parts here, all that shit, just tons of it. All right, so that's our electrostatic driver, and then here's the magnetostat driver. It's very simple. Okay, so let's uh, here, let me zoom back out real quick. Come on, no, don't zoom on that stuff. Focus in on my hand. There we go. Alright, so this is the this is the actual driver, this little metal this little metal piece right here. Alright. So that's the actual diaphragm. It's just a cheap, simple piece of steel. It's just the cheapest cheapest thing ever. Um, there might be some kind of special prog process or like impregnation or whatever, like uh, something like that, you know. I'm sure there's a little bit of magic behind it, but it's nowhere as complex as the uh, electrostatic driver. And let me just break this apart real quick. Come on. PCB does not want to come off. There we go. Alright, some batteries getting ready to die soon. So I will have to finish this up. Either that or I will have to plug my phone in soon. Oh, shoot. So these magnets are extremely strong. So I guess that's part of the process to get any kind of volume or power out of them is you need like incredibly strong magnets. So yeah, so this is all the magnetostat. So you have the PCB and then you have terminals on either side. Each one goes to the coil. So all this crap is sticking cuz it's got glue on it. But anyway, so you have a Come on, you bastard, get off. Ah, oh, you piece of crap, get off. So you have a coil on each side wired into the PCB. Then you have your diaphragm that sits in the middle. And you have a magnet on one side. And that's that's why I said it's like steel, it's ferrous, because you see it, it, it attaches to the magnets. And if I were to stick it to the other side, same thing. So you got a magnet on one side, the magnets aren't even touching. So just uses a simple piece of steel. That's all there is to it. So anyway, there you go. Sonian uh, electrostatic. And then KZ slash, uh, I believe it's TDK is the company that originally uh, created this driver. Um, but I guess the patent ran out or something or bunch of people started cloning it so this is one of the clones 
uh, I believe the original was actually attached to a speaker and I could show you guys that too but uh, I don't want to take up too much more time because I want to take apart some more drivers so here are balanced armatures these are the big boys I'll start with these first and then we'll get to the small ones so I can show you how they miniaturized the technology so what I'll do is there we go so I just use my pliers to kind of crack them open all right. So there's the driver, and I just pulled the um, diaphragm away from the uh, armature. So let me see if I can zoom in on this. I'll show you guys. All right. So there we go. So here is. Let me grab my my needle nose, so I can show you guys what's going on here so this is the armature okay the there's a connecting rod which is this little pokey bit right here it kind of stands off uh, from that from that piece of metal that you see there so let's see if I can show you guys So you see there, there you go, you can see it better on my fingernail. So you see that little little stick that pokes up and then there's like a little dot on the end of it. That is what creates the sound or that is what couples the, um, the actual speaker motor to the diaphragm. It's just that little rod there and whenever you have a problem with your BA, so like low volume or some kind of distortion or, or, or funny sound or, or different in like difference in tuning it's because that rod got messed up because it got bent or damaged or something like that and this right here is the diaphragm so that little dot is where that rod connects to it connects to that little dot right there and this whole piece of metal that whole thing is the diaphragm it, and it's literally just a piece of metal and if you look closely it's kind of hard to show you guys but this pink coating here is like a um is like a uh, like a like a what do you call it like a vinyl or like a not a silicone but it's like a vinyl coating and there is a metal ring that goes all the way around and makes this whole thing airtight and then there's a little gap around between the metal ring and between the diaphragm here that allows this to travel. So you see me pushing on it? See how it's moving? That's the motion that creates the sound. It's transmitted through that metal rod up to this point right here and it just moves back and forth and it's like a bellow. If you guys know what a bellows is, uh, you can look it up if, if you're not sure what a bellows is. But it's just like a bellows, and the sound pressure comes in and out, gets sucked in and out of the cavity. And that's why the holes are shaped like this. That's why they're flat. Sometimes you'll see cutouts on a BA, like you'll see a cutout right here. And that's a different type of BA. It operates the exact same way, but instead of there being a spout, that communicates the sound uh, instead it's open and there's a hole right there so anyway so like I said this is like a like a rubber material like a vinyl material that this piece of metal is coated in and if we take our razor knife and we stick it in between that gasket and the um, and the diaphragm we can actually cut it out To show you guys. I'm sorry. I just want to show you where I'm cutting. So I'm cutting, there's a metal ring here, and I'm cutting just right next to it. And you can actually take this out. Okay. 
sorry, I know my focal focal length is not very very wide, so it's kind of hard to show you guys what's going on. Oh come on! Oh you bastard! Come on, you fucker. Get out. Alright. So there we go. So let me try to zoom in a little further. No, 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 no. Come on. You can do it. So that is the diaphragm. And then if we flip it over... Whoops. If we flip it over you'll see it's nothing more than just a, uh, a normal piece of uh, metal probably aluminum maybe I think it looks like aluminum um, but yeah and it has this coating on the back and this this coating here and you can actually see you can actually see me pull it up so it's just glued on okay but this coating is is stretchy. It's like rubbery. All right. And this acts as the surround ring, and this also acts as a barrier to keep moisture out and whatnot. But it allows the movement to be transferred. Um, and yeah, you can see there's there's like a ring inside. That is another part of the driver. And that ring is press fit into this shell here, okay? And there's a little gap in between this metal ring and the diaphragm that allows the diaphragm to move freely. So that is the inside of the driver. And then let's take a look at the motor. So this is the motor, okay? So you have a essentially kind of like a, a choke. So it's a coil of wire. Okay, so it's kind of like a speaker. And you have this little metal frame that's held in here. And let me actually let me get it out and I'll show you guys a little bit better about how it works. There we go. Okay, so on the other end here, it's pretty simple. It's just the PCB, all right, and then just the other side of the shell. And this right here is the motor structure. And we can see our little metal, our little metal rod. Okay, so if I hold my finger up to it, because it's light enough in color that it contrasts, so you see, basically what we have here is we have two, two permanent magnets. There's a magnet here, and there's a magnet on the top end. And this little tongue is what moves up and down. And this is the armature. So basically this moves, and it attaches to this connecting rod here. And I believe one of the reasons why this connecting rod is so thin is so that way it um, it has a little bit of give to it. It doesn't transmit all the force because if it did, it would have like way more timbre. Um, it would also add to the weight. And I think when you would go to put it into your ears and there'd be like air pressure, uh, there'd be too much resistance on it and you could like bend it or break break the little rod but yeah it just attaches to this little piece of metal here let me see if I can sorry guys I'm trying to stay in focus but yeah so there's a little metal rod that runs down this coil here all the way to the end so you have a little piece of metal here so it's just bent and it goes all the way through, all the way through, and they stamped it out, and it protrudes at the end of this um, this magnet structure here. And you have just two little magnets on the end, and that's that's one of the reasons why 
balanced armatures, I guess, are so popular because they don't require a lot of magnets. You can make them without um, a lot of magnets. They just require two little ones right at the end. So, I could be wrong. I mean, some of this stuff I looked up a long time ago. Some of it I, I didn't, but yeah, there you go. And if we cut this open, let's just cut it real quick. We can pull this out. Okay. And that is the armature right there. The little piece of metal runs all the way through that little housing there and it just vibrates up and down uh, the, the magnetic force on it just pulls it up and down and again it's all it's made out of cheap materials too steel is much much cheaper than uh, all these exotic like diaphragm membranes and stuff like that the only thing that's really expensive is the um, the manufacturing because it's at such a small scale and this and you gotta think about it this is the largest this is the largest driver this is the largest balanced armature they pretty much make um, so yeah like this is the um, this, the CL series or CI or whatever it is CL the 22955 this is like the biggest balanced armature that they make so but yeah basically this this is like the same thing as a voice coil on a speaker but it's just a little different. It's much more mechanical. So let's just zoom back out. Okay. So that is our balanced armature right there. All that stuff. And just get the little metal piece in there. Okay. So that's it. So this creates the, um, the magnetism drives this little rod here this little rod has like a little connecting rod that connects to this plate here this is the actual diaphragm that makes the sound and it's transferred through the cavity out this uh, little tiny hole just a little tiny hole little tiny slit in there so let me uh Give me one second, guys. I'm just going to pause for a minute. I'm going to plug my phone in real quick so I don't lose you. All right. Let me make sure my phone does not stop recording. Nope. Looks like it's still recording. All right. So anyway, so that was the, the newer KZ balanced armature. Let's open up another one here real quick. So this is the older one. There we go. Uh, so far it looks the same. Now that doesn't mean that it's it's not different. Um, there can still be differences like the weight of the diaphragm here, the material that they're using, this like rubbery like vinyl material could be different in mass. Um, there could be more windings or less windings. So just because it looks the same doesn't mean it is uh, the same. It could, by all means, be different. But yeah, the last driver that I looked at was the upgraded balanced armature. And this is the more classic balanced armature. And let me just cut this out real quick. And I have working ones of these too, so I will test them out and see if there is any difference between the two. So there's that one. There's that one. You know what? Let me zoom in. Alright. And there's that. Piece. 
Jeez. I don't know, whatever. Fuck it. Alright, so, so yeah. So those are the two balance temperatures. And again, there you can see the material a little bit better. It's just like uh, some sort of vinyl. It's like it's like the stuff that you you rip off um, whenever you get like a new piece of glass or whatever. You get like a phone or an electronic device and it has like that peel. Like that's like the same stuff that they use on the balance armatures. So um, I'm not sure what that little hole's about. Maybe that's some sort of relief for pressure. Um, it's still got to be covered because uh, you don't want to um, let air move through. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Maybe that is. Hmm. You know, what? I'm not actually sure what that is. So maybe that is a hole. No, 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 it's sealed. I see it now. Yeah, I can see it. It's got material over it. It's just really hard to see. But yeah, so, so yeah, maybe that's to, um, to allow for changes in pressure. So you can just barely make out the material right there. So yeah, so, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, so when you put them in your ears and there's like a change in pressure, it doesn't like bend or warp the metal that's another reason why they're stamped like this they have this stamping in there it's to make them more rigid and uh, you can change the timbre and, and the quality of the sound and everything by changing the the coatings on the metal how thick the metal is um, same thing with this this printing you can change the imprint uh, to change the stiffness okay so yeah just keep in mind again that's the diaphragm Alright, so let's move on. So, just to recap, what did we look at? We looked at the Sonian Electrostatic. We looked at the um, the KZ uh, clone that they're using. I'm not sure what company makes it, but the clone of the Magnetostat driver. Uh, we looked at the balanced armatures. Um, those were the 22955s, so they are the biggest balanced armatures that you can get. Um, and what we will do here is actually, let me just rip the PCB off of one of these because I just want to, I want to keep this in, in frame to illustrate for you guys just how small balanced armatures get. So <clears throat> here we have a mid-range BA, okay, and you can see there's its little spout right there. So we're going to crack this boy open real quick. And these are all just like tack welded. Alright, so there's that little, I call it a tongue, but it's a diaphragm. So there it is. Like I said, I call it a little tongue. And then the armature, a little connecting rod. Yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Yeah, there you go. You see it a little better. see that there so that little teeny rod that is what transfers the motion and it moves in and out it moves this way but yeah that that is what makes there we go so you can see it in action if I get my tweezers on it so that is how it creates the sound it's coupled that's why they call it balanced armature because it's balanced it's t it's two-sided you have the diaphragm on one side and then you have the um, the transducer on the other side god darn it anyway you guys kind of get the point. So, anywho, yeah, so that's it. And then, um, just to show you the diaphragm real quick. Oh, shoot. Alright, so there's the diaphragm. And you can see 
the little rod, the little connecting rod is like tack welded right up there and you can see how that motion is transferred see yeah and there you can see the uh, you can see the actual material see how it, it bends and flexes but there's a gap that runs completely around the diaphragm and this metal housing here but yeah that's that's your balanced armature making sound right there just like like I said it's like a bell, uh, bellows and uh, let me just zoom out real quick okay and so if I if I cut this one out now this is like the size of your mid-range BA so this would be like your 22955 I mean I'm sorry your 29689s um, shoot. Uh, also, like, um, your, uh, what do you call it? Your full range BAs. So, like, your, uh, 2354, 2389s. Um, that is basically the size of, of this. 